Hola, hola, hola! How are you doing today? Today is Wednesday, and yesterday I meant to put a video up. I'm still working on it, but little sensitive YouTube over here. You know how YouTube gets all sensitive, so I'm still working on it. So that one will go up on Friday. So I thought, you know, I might as well. There's some things that I have on my mind. Might as well do a little bit more straightforward video so that I can put it right up. So I just wanted to share with you guys. I know you see that sometimes I tweet about this YouTuber. Sometimes I share their videos, but here's the thing. This is what I really think of Peter Mon. So um, a couple years back, actually, I used to watch Peter Mon. Um, I can't remember exactly how I came across his channel, but it was one of those things when you're on YouTube and you go to one video, suggestion another, la 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 la. I found Peter Munn. So <clears throat> I loved his energy. I loved what he had to say. Um, but I ended up, and I actually did a video about him before. I'll link it below, of course. Um, I gained so much from him in his channel. But. I stopped watching him and I unsubscribed to his channel and I unfollowed him for a little bit. And the reason why was because at the time he was doing a lot of content on two other YouTubers that were like doing a lot of collabs together and blah, blah, blah. And that was Jeffree Star and Shane Dawson. So long story short as I can make it, uh, I used to be a huge Shane Dawson fan. And what's funny is the reason why I found his channel a few years back was because I was looking for like conspiracy videos and that's what he was doing at the time. So I was like, wow, these are really well done. I really like these videos. And then when I started watching his vlogs, I was like, wow, this is really awesome. This reminds me of like what me and Danielle do. So I got really inspired. So I don't regret drinking the Shane Dawson Kool-Aid because even though after a while I was just like I don't know why he's rubbing me wrong he's rubbing me so wrong and then a couple things happened I have let's just say that just a couple things happened and that just really showed his true character and I was like ew that's why that's why I don't like him and he's been rubbing me wrong okay and so um I was just, if you guys have followed me, <laughs> I know this, I'm not trying to be petty Shelly over here or anything, but if you've been following me like on Twitter for a long time, if you recall, like there's been times over the last few years where I'm just like, oh, there's this YouTuber. I wish like I wouldn't see their face and da da da. Well, I was really talking about Shane Dawson. I wasn't going to sit there and say, oh, Shane Dawson, because I felt that was being petty Shelly. But it was one of those things I just felt like I had to get it out. Like I had to say like, oh, I just need to get it out because at that time I like muted him. Um, you know, I just, and everything just kept popping up all the time. And that's why with Peter, it was just like, I was so triggered by Shane's face. <laughs> I know it sounds so stupid. Like I'm saying it out loud. I'm a grown ass woman. Right. And like, I feel stupid saying any of this, but it's just the truth. Um, and that's why I unfollowed poor Peter because I was just like, oh, but you know, everything happens for a reason. I totally believe in that. And when I went back to his channel, it was recently, um, in the last, like, I've been watching him now again for a couple months. And the reason why I went and checked out his content was because I missed him. I was like, I wonder what Peter's up to. Like, what's it, what's going on? Like, what's his channel looking like? And I was like, huh. And even though there was still lots of Jeffree Star and Shane Dawson stuff, at that point, I was at, I was at the point where I wasn't affected by Shane as much because I had gone through so many different emotions and feelings. And I know it sounds so stupid. Like I said, I feel dumb saying this, but I guess, no, I know one of the main reasons why I was so disappointed in him in my little interaction I've had with him. Um, I 
no, it's because when I was watching his content, I was going through a really dark time in my life. It was when I was realizing that I needed to just be done with the wrestling world. And it was a lot. Like, I don't think people really understand what that does, especially I was in the wrestling world for 17 years and you know, I'm 40 and that's like almost half of my life I was in the wrestling world. So, which is something that I recently just kind of thought about in those terms and it tripped me out and it made so much sense on why I have been so butthurt over the years, through, like with rest, either the wrestling business, people in wrestling and that's why it affected me so much and i don't think people realize that when somebody decides to retire not necessarily because they can't do it anymore physically but because spiritually they're just like i can't do this anymore so it's like totally different reasons right um i don't know if many people know this but i was at the point to where you know wrestling on the weekends was my full-time job, you know? And then during the week, that's when I was trying to build my YouTube channel and my secret society and uh, my blog channel, ShellyMartinez.net. So I was trying to, even though I didn't want to be in it anymore, treat it like it was my job on the weekends so I can live. <laughs> But it's going to help me so that I can build these other aspects that, like, it totally helps that, like, I'm known in the wrestling world. Do you know what I mean? So I looked at it as, like, just hang in there, Shelly, <laughs> until this other stuff works out. But I just couldn't do it anymore. And when I decided to quit, you know, it was tough times. And I was like, you know what? I don't care. I'm going to do Uber Eats and I'm going to do Postmates and that's just what's up and i did it and you know a lot of the times it didn't bother me because um you know i like going out i like going and finding new places so there's a lot of places that like i went back to or whatever so it didn't bother me and i dressed really cute so like to me it was just like you know getting out of the house and okay cool but there were times that it was very draining just driving around la of course and um, putting up with the traffic. I used to uh, do this whole thing because I used to have an incentive on, was it Postmates or was it Uber Eats? I can't remember which one. Where like if you drove and did deliveries during this certain bracket, you like got this guaranteed pay. And so what I would do is I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna treat it like, you know, like a just a little side gig and I work those hours to make that pay and that's it and it was tough you know and uh because I wasn't I guess you would say your average Postmates Uber driver uh I started dealing with a lot of douchebags <laughs> Especially these rich people up in these houses. I don't know what they do for a living. And um, it was just weird. It was it, So it started turning into, it just wasn't worth it, but I had to do it now because, and then at that time, those incentives were cut off. So like they stopped. So then it became really hard to do, um, do it and make good money, you know what I mean? So it was rough. That's when I really focused on doing the secret society and, um, you know, really pumping that up because I was like, dude, I got to do something like I can't be doing this post Macy Uber Eats. It's not worth it anymore now that these incentives are gone. So like that's how much I didn't want to be in wrestling anymore <laughs> that I like did that instead when I could have easily just said, you know what? This isn't for me. I guess I'll go back to wrestling. I'm not retired yet. People would have been fine with it, but I wasn't, you know what I mean? And so I think when people kind of just like misunderstand um, my pain and I'm like very open online about how I feel about things, that's when I got like labeled being like bitter or crazy or whatever. And I'm fine with all of that. Like, I really don't care because anytime I've shared anything, there's been people specifically in the wrestling business that will privately reach out to me and then be like, dude, I watched your video or I saw your tweet. Like, 
and then a cool constructive conversation happens and that's why i share my thoughts and my opinions not to be a traviesa but to share that with people because i have a platform and the reason why i don't stop doing that even though there is some like negative backlash a lot that i've gone through for just my mouth getting me in trouble i guess so much positive came out of it so um in saying that what has been really hard for me throughout the years is feeling like that injustice feeling right now i had this whole like negative feelings i was having towards this person who i don't even know which was shane dawson and it just really triggered so much and when i started to see that like in peter's videos i kind of felt like he looked at shane the same way i did so i finally felt like i wasn't alone and crazy because i hate to admit this but I felt so guilty because I did not want to like throw bad vibes to anybody. So I was like, oh my goodness, like I don't want to sh throw Shane Dawson these bad vibes. I don't even know the guy. Like, oh my goodness, like ay ay ay. And there was even some other YouTubers who I am friendly with online. And I would reach out to them and I would never tell them what YouTuber I was talking about. Um, but I would tell them, I'd be like, you know, I'm just really struggling because like I'm, I hate to admit it, but like I'm jealous of this YouTuber because like I see right through them and what they're doing and how, what they're about and they're just like thriving. And then here I am, it's like pulling teeth to try to get views. And it wasn't jealousy like, oh, blah, blah, blah. It was more like frustration. It's like, you know. To be at the top of the YouTube game, there's so much that comes with it. I don't even want any part of it. It's too much. <laughs> but there's people like Peter Mon who are out there and they're doing it and they're successful. And even though they're looked at as maybe smaller channels, to me, I look at them as very successful because they're doing things, they're doing things on their terms. They're just being very true to themselves. And that's what always made me want to do YouTube when I like realized it was a thing. It's like, oh my gosh, I can just be myself and share my stories, share my thoughts, you know, whether it's fun and we're just talking about music or movies or whatever, or if it's telling you about my experiences in wrestling or in whatever. That's the kind of content I love because a lot of times you can gain something from that and through Peter's videos I have just consistently gotten that but it's really interesting how I stopped watching his channel for a while because during that time but it was like I was supposed to step away because it's like and it's one of those things where how can I say it Something that Peter does talk about in his in his uh, videos <clears throat> is how these big YouTubers seem to get a pass or are, people are very forgiving when they like mess up, right? And whereas others, not so much. And that really resonated with me because for me in the world of wrestling, I experienced a lot of crap. I saw a lot of crap. I tried to share the crap I saw or experienced um, in hopes to just give people that information, do with it what you will. But then I would always get in trouble and then it would be like such a headache and then it would just make me upset and then make me feel like, dude, I can't even see any say anything. And then it would be really frustrating that like, when I look like the traviesa making trouble over here and then a couple years go by and then like people start speaking up about the same things, that feeling of like, dude, I've already been talking about this. This is nothing new. That kept happening so much. And so when I started to watch Peter's videos and him talking about these, uh, 
big YouTubers, it made me think of the wrestling world. And like, instead of those YouTubers put in whatever wrestlers, right? And it's like, I realized that I've wasted too much of my own energy trying to, how can I say it? Trying to get the truth out there when in all honesty, a lot of people, they don't really care about the truth. Maybe they do for a little bit, but then it's on to the next thing. And that would really frustrate me. And I've talked to other people who've experienced like similar things that I have or uh, seen some of the, or seen some of the crap or been through some of the crap that I have in wrestling, especially the women. And all of us feel like it's like, that's like always the cycle and like what happens. So now when I'm like seeing Peter talk about these YouTubers, I'm finding that healing because it's like, it's not just in wrestling, you know, it's not just in YouTube, like that's just how it is. And when you put a little fame and some money, AKA YouTubers and wrestlers, especially the more successful they are, you just, it gets highlighted more, but it's like, dude, it really does happen everywhere, you know? And it just really, watching his videos has brought me so much healing because I've been able to apply it to wrestling and it's given me a big freedom to be real with you. Like, it's just really made me feel like, who cares? Let all these people, these toxic people, be toxic <laughs> because eventually their true color is going to show and whoever wants to excuse it's going to excuse it and whoever is going to be like okay i'm cool i'm done supporting this like person or whatever like it's not up to me it's not my journey and what my purpose is is to share my stories is to share my experiences but it's like i had to go through all of that from being all upset about how I got fired from WWE to some of the stuff I went through in TNA and then to going back to the indies and the things that I went through through there and um to sit in here right now it's like I had to go through all that and moral of the story is is it's freaking okay to go through those moments and it's just like, don't be dwelling on those moments because something Peter said in one of his videos recently that really resonated with me was, um, he was talking about how they say, like people say like, oh, forget the past. But if you like forget the past, you won't remember what you learned from those mistakes. And I was like, oh my gosh, like that, oh my goodness, yes. And a lot of, and it made sense to me to where it's like, okay, it's not that I'm all obsessed with the past and things that happen because those things can't hurt me anymore. And I learned so much from them. So when I do think about those moments, like that's why I was able to see Shane Dawson's face and I'm fine now because I learned so much that I learned that lesson. So it doesn't affect me like that, but I still remember. And that just really was like the full rounded, like, full circle what I needed. And I really look forward to just, oh my gosh, I'm gonna cry. Wow. I really look forward to embracing that. This girl in front of you, like I remember this girl, but I've been so hurt for her so long that, uh, it's so cool that the uh, last missing piece of the puzzle was watching Peter Mon's videos. So if Peter Mon, you watch this, positive vibes to you. I hope you feel better soon. I've been praying for you and um, thank you for being you. All right, until next time you guys. I'm Shelly from Kelly, and I'm going to be smelling you later.